Hello there, you beautiful people! My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever for another 4v4 cast on the map gen with Team 1, as always, up here in the top left, and Team 2 in the bottom right. We're gonna be having a nice game today, but before we get into introducing our players, I would like to say really quickly, if you hear any off audio, if the audio doesn't quite sound as good as it normally does, that's because I'm having to run my fan while I play, because it's too hot! So yeah, starting in the 12 o'clock position for Team 1, we have a red UEF going first land by the name of Sailor Moon. Then we can move to the west for the second player of Team 2, a white UEF going first land, and his name is Fong. And of course, to the south of him, we have the next player for Team 1. His name is Campfex500, and he has chosen the best faction. Yes, indeed, he is Aeon, and he is purple. As we move on to the Red Cybern going first land, his name is Sol Bacchus 276 and he has started first land as a Red Cybern. And I cannot speak, apparently. Stumbling over my words. As we move into player introductions for Team 2, we have a dark green UEF going first land by the name of Lorem Ipsum. Then up to the east of him, we have a blue best faction Aeon going first air by the name of Jip. Then up to the north of him, we have a Cyan UEF going first land who has the name E3314421133242. And then last but not least for the entire game, we have an orange Seraphim going first land by the name of Noob Dragoon. I think I called him Noob Dragon last time and people like jumped down my throat for it, but that's fine. Um, I can't speak and you can't listen because if you were listening really closely you would have already heard when I said like and subscribe if you say I didn't say it beforehand you're a liar go back and watch the first 10 minutes of this video like 30 times even though we're not even 10 minutes in give me that sweet sweet watch time and viewer retention <laughs> all right so, the map, let's look at it, let's talk about it really, really quick. 5,300-ish reclaim, probably closer to like 5,500 before we got done introducing the players. So, a lot of reclaim, but more importantly, a lot of mass extractors, and the vast majority of them are settled here in the middle of the map. This kind of central axis that separates these two teams from each other is where most of the economy in this game is going to lie. So the first team to get a big advantage here in the middle or on one of these flanks is going to have a lot of economy to throw behind themselves, a lot of weight, as, as it were, to just throw into units and blow up the enemy comms. So it's going to be interesting. We're going to have a lot of great land battles, and we're going to be starting it off with Fong being Fong. He's very aggressive, and he has chosen three... Count them, three mech marines and a snoop to use for his dastardly deeds of uh, murdering everything he may come across. We're going to track these for just a little bit. Uh, of course, they could separate at any given time, getting dangerously close to some engineers for Noob Dragoon, but instead deciding to re 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 redirect his attention over towards E3314421132364. Oh god, I'm not- oh, it's- ah, oh, damn it, it's 2424. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Okay, well, bad caster. I can't get anybody's names right. I mean, this name is so simple. This is not convoluted at all. From now on, his name is, though, going to be Edward. So Edward, he's walking out. He killed off those mech marines with little to no trouble whatsoever. So a poor investment out from Fong very early on. Don't trust him. He's one of the people who says he got in early at crypto. And what he means, he got in during the spike right before the crash. Uh, because you always buy. It, listen, stonks, price always go up. Uh, 
we're off the rails as damage and range now is coming off the rails for Sailor Moon. 6%, 7% already done on this. A couple of minutes and we're going to be seeing a very, very chonky calm with that chonky gun upgrade. As down in the south, we don't need gun upgrades to get aggressive towards each other as Lorimism and Solabacus have decided that they're going to make sweet, sweet love with their plasma cannons as they walk towards each other or away from each other, depending on how you look at this situation. Striker coming in, getting that free dips as it's going to just fire into the back of this Cybern Calm, the UEF being very aggressive. And that Striker gonna go down. Now some Mantis showing up, and this could turn the tides of this battle, but the Cybern Calm of Solback is not feeling too happy to take on the challenge and decides to fall back because he cannot handle the heat in the kitchen that or Lorem Ipsum is kick cooking in. Whoo, man, I'm words. <laughs> oh, you all are so beautiful. And my commentary is so, so ugly as we have a T2 upgrade now on the way for Edward. I was going to go for it again, but I, I, I don't have the courage. Speed and range on the way for Noob Dragoon. So those are all of the upgrades I've spotted so far. Teach you now on the way for Solo Bacchus. And we have, of course, damage and range now starting up over here for Fong. Speed on the way for Camp Fex. Everybody gets an upgrade. This is the Oprah show. You get an upgrade and you will get an upgrade and you will get an upgrade as over here to the east. A bunch of units are now sparring with each other in some relatively scrimmage like combat they're having a bit of a chat with their cannons and instead of uh, fully committing team one doesn't decide to go forward there i guess there is an acu here but you definitely had the numbers advantage as now fong redirects more troops down towards edward who is currently getting t2 and he's about to finish it up and he has more units in general in this area but a t1 mech's gonna be the price to pay for his lack of response to that early raid coming out from Fong. Fong can even most likely fall back here and just keep most of these strikers alive. Gonna lose a few in this exchange. He has some reinforcements coming along. Down to the southwest. T2 going to finish up in 3, 2, 1, 4. Sol Bacchus 2, 7, 6. And he is already building a Cerberus, which is already at 50%. What a guy down here. He is building up those three-headed dogs like you wouldn't believe. As up to the northeast, damage and range close to finishing up for Fong. Speed has already finished up for Camp Bex, as well as the range upgrade. Aeon having two separate upgrades for what everybody else gets in one. Uh, then we have of course the image and range finish up for Sailor Moon and speed and range finish up for Noob Dragoon so we have a lot of gun comms here congregating in the middle none of them really close to each other except for the comms of Camp Fex and Edward Edward now going to take some shots he has that T2 upgrade if he can get up a few more triads he can really just shut down Camp Fex attempt at aggression and he is doing well with the triads I of course want to see if he's going to over invest into this technology or not of course looking at the ratings it's Camp Fex and uh, Edward here are the highest rated players at 1600 and 1700 respectively so it is going to be very interesting as Fong manages to make a backline run by raid into Edward's territory and oh no it's a disaster there's engineers going down there's T1 mexes going down there might be a hydrocarbon going down and when you go down you get dirty <laughs> and these units man are they filthy as in the middle, we have some more verbal sparring going on between the comm of Camp Fex and Edward's back as he builds triads, which continue to pelt the comm of Camp Fex with sweet, sweet damage. And uh, it does seem as though Edward moves his comm to block shots going into that triad. Up here to the northeast, Noob Dragoon finding himself in a very unsavory position as he's getting fired at by multiple factions, or... Not multiple factions, but by multiple players' units being Fong and Sailor Moon. And Sailor Moon's comm is here to just uh, give him a good old shellacking. And we might have our first ejection here as Noob Dragoon is getting dangerously low on HP, dipping into the red HP marker. And he is going to continue to eat these double damage shots. You have to remember the UEF, they get those big chonky shots whenever they get their gun upgrade, that damage and range. And it's going to result in a big chonky Seraphim explosion. The only good kind of ACU explosion is a Seraphim one. And to a degree, Cybern and UEF. Let's just face it. Aeon is the only one you don't want to see. As that unfortunate 
transgression a po- as, uh, <laughs> I cannot speak. As that unfortunate turn of events happens for Team 2, the base goes over to the illustrious Electric Blue player, Jip. I shouldn't say Electric Blue. I mean, it really is Electric Blue. If I had to look at this, I'd call it that. But, uh, like, uh, no, it, it, yeah, I can't be doing that. People are going to say, you're just trying to ride Guile's coattails. I mean, true, but, you know, can't be overt about it. <laughs> oh, God. As up here to the northeast, we have our first ejection, and we have our first sign of dominance from either side. And it really just seems like Team 1 has a better handle on how they want to play the map. They definitely have more map control. It's going to become a lot more apparent whenever I do this. You see this kind of, uh, this kind of, like, dome shape? You don't want that. You want to be the one who has, like, the reverse dome shape for your territory. And there's just more mexes going up to this northern team. And with the aggression now being shown up here to this northeastern corner, that's going to be four, five mexes going down in quick succession, probably for Jip, and that's going to be very, very unfortunate. Oh, Jip is also a 1700, so we have a 1700 for each side, and then we have Fong and Edward, who are uh, 1500 and 1600, respectively. As over here in the center, some units out from Edward are just going to get gunned down as Sailor Moon is really getting some value out of this gun comm, having a great time. Down to the southwest, we have a much more stagnant situation. Usually when one player decides to turtle, it leads to a situation somewhat like this. And we have T2 Air out from Jip, and he's going to be sending some Spectre gunships. The beautiful, great engineering design, the amazing rework from, a, at this point, like a couple years ago making the Spectre such a better unit. And as it flies into this base, we're gonna see a ton of engineers go down to that AOE giant cannon that Spectre's now pack. And that's going to be a dead mech. And now another mech in the crosshairs of these gunships out from Jip. And he is going to be making some, I, I don't know, toast. He's making some Cybran toast using the mass extractors as a nice, base for whatever condiments he's gonna put on is it called a condiment like would you consider like you put butter on toast or like nutella or like spreads are those considered condiments or spreads or you put jelly on toast somebody explain toast to me in the comment section all of the core mexes here for uh what's his name again <laughs> soul bacchus you, you want to know how I can how, how to make a name rememberable? Make it so ir unpronounceable that I have no chance like Edward did with E331442113324244. Or have a normal fucking name. Otherwise, in the middle of a cast, you're really embarrassed when he's like, Oh man, he didn't know what my name was. And it wasn't because I haven't casted enough to be able to remember four eight names at a time. Trust me, I can do that. It's just when the name is... Boring. Soul Bacchus, you have a boring name. I hope that's not your real name. Because in, if, if that's the case, I've just insulted your entire character. Because we all know that you definitely choose your name. Not your parents. Here in the middle, Camp Vex currently throwing some shots into this firebase. He's managed to get shield. He's been trying to be aggressive on towards Edward this entire game. And it looks like he may be breaking through in short succession as Edward has abandoned the position it would seem. He's fallen back and he's not really trying to hold on to this. He's sending some units back in here through the mid but he only has T1 units. Where's all of his T2? Where are the pillars? You need pillars. They're so strong. They are in fact a pillar of your gameplay at the T2 phase as here in the south we're gonna see a bunch of pillars killing a bunch of mantis might be doing a little bit better if they moved to avoid the Medusa fire, but still, these pillars just, they're rocking these Mantis, and the Mantis don't like rock music, they're more of a country or classical group. Um, that's, uh, the Mantis are really, it may not seem it, but the Cybran, they're like the rednecks of the FAF universe. <laughs> I mean, it kind of makes sense, the Cybrans being the rednecks of the FAF universe. They, I think the Cybern is the most likely to be as somebody who is like, all right, well, you give me like a Mountain Dew can and 
a rubber band and I can get you about eight miles. They seem like mechanics. It's canon now. If you're a Cybern player, you're just a redneck. Okay? Thank you. I'm an authority on this. I live in the south. Even though rednecks are everywhere. I, I say that a lot. But. I say that a lot in, in voice chat. I, I should shut up and talk about what's going on as Fong and Campfex have forced Edward into an unsavory position as E3314421133242424 takes a ton of damage from Fong who has that damage and range upgrade which can just be deceptive. It doesn't feel like you're getting attacked by a gun upgrade because you don't, unless you zoom in and just see him hitting you or you're looking at your HP and you're like, oh, that's more than 100 HP a second per hit. But still, he's just having struggles. He's got some T2 units on the field, but the Mongeese Parashield combo here making it really difficult for Edward to get anything done. He's just constantly having to give up ground. Jip, though, on the top eastern side, the northeastern side, that's how you should say that, uh, is pushing forward. He now has some Ilshivas, and there is a bit of a fire base over here, and we do have the Calm of Sailor Moon to stop anything major from happening, but a little bit of eco gonna go down, some forward T2 mexes. And Edward is just continuing to take a pounding right through the front door. He may as well not have even built a, a door. At this point, it's a window. That doesn't have glass. Oh my god, my metaphors are falling flat. Somebody delete my channel. I, I'm i so bad at commentary. We're, I, I've done so much. I've thought I've improved, but no, we're just back to square fucking one. I just need to go do what I did in my first cast and just be all timid and nervous. <laughs> Now I've gone the I've gone the entire spectrum now. I went from the timid and nervous caster to the caster who is just like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> Although, I do want to point out that Team 1 is doing phenomenally. Team 1 has more reclaim. Team 1 has less mass income per second. I didn't take into account that Jip is a 1700 and he has two bases, so he is going to be sitting on a stupid amount of economy. And in fact almost to the point where he could build an experimental if he paused everything else. Like, reasonably, not like quickly, but he could reasonably get one out there, and that is not a bad thing at all. As Lorem Ipsum slowly pushing back against Soul Beck is using a bunch of flapjacks to try and take down this firebase, and flapjacks, as we were talking about Toast, also get jelly, and I mean, I guess you can put jelly. Yeah, I, are pancakes like toast? Can you put Nutella on pancakes? Is that acceptable breakfast manners? I'm gonna try it one day. I'm gonna put Nutella on ban on pancakes. On pancakes! Oh my god! And right now, speaking of pancakes, Edward is about to get banned from this game as he is walking forward into a situation that's not necessarily good for him. These pillars are gonna take a lot of damage from the mongooses. And these, well, these these obsidians are, well, they're suicidal, but you, you gotta say, they do have some spiting spirit in there with them. Campfex, uh, gonna take a shot from a specter. His shield is down, but it's, a, oh, no, his shield is up? How is it regening so much? What, what was that black magic fuckery? How do you, what? Okay, well, it regened really fast for a second there. As Fong is making his way forward, walking fast, and he is trying to help Campfex break this position, but surprisingly, Edward, despite being on, I think, the lowest economy in the game, yes, that is true, is managing to hold off two of the higher economy, or I guess, these two players have triple his economy, okay, they're higher economy, Four, 50 mass a second on both of them versus 30, it's, that's, it's like, it's more than triple, actually. More than triple the economy, and they cannot break Edward, the absolute Chad gamer. Although, he's taking a lot of damage, and he's getting dangerously low on HP, about to be dipping into the territory where he's going to be at red HP, as those mongoose just fire into the chassis of that comm. More mongoose fire coming in. Looks a little bit like an underpowered Ravager, the mongoose does on, with its Gatling gun. And, uh, yeah, that's... That's a lot of dead mongeese, but I can't be upset because they've been so cost-effective so far. 
up here to the north the attack out from Jip not managing to get too much done over here we um yep this is happening it's gonna continue to happen for the foreseeable future have they considered have either of them just considered like normal units no they haven't Lorem Ipsum doesn't believe in technology or T3 at all, and uh, uh, he Soul Bacchus has a little bit of an excuse. He lost all of his eco at like the 10, 10 minute mark. Like he's only had he's basically started this game at 10 minutes, so he has a tiny excuse. But T3, that's just foreign technology. He can't build more than two Titans. Love you, Lorem. Lorem's in the Discord, so I bully him a little bit. Um, because I know he can take it, and because he can, uh, he can go on Discord and make me look like an idiot every time I say something about him. So, you know. Give and take. As... Yeah, okay! Look, we have action! We have an attack! Oh, look at this. It's a huge attack. It's a snack attack as the flapjacks stack, and the titans smack down the T1 and T2 forces. Mostly T1 forces. The calm of Sol Bacchus is standing over here really way more confident than I would be in this situation. The Flapjacks are going to get more and more valuable each TMD that goes down to these Titans and these pillars. And Sol Bacchus is going to have to fall Bacchus into his basis. Actually, he may just be dead. Nah, I don't know. There's not enough Titans. If he had saved up, like, to 15 Titans, this is a dead calm. That's like the that's the differences we're playing with here. Campfex in the middle, along with Fong, still trying to get some aggression down, but just very stagnant over here. But in the northeast, we have Sailor Moon showing up with a very big Percival or not Percival Pillar Force. God, if this was a Percival Force, I'd be shitting my pants. Uh, I would need to clean up on Isle Willow. Um, <laughs> over here to the west. Why am I going um so much, dude? I, this cast is so bad. Why are you watching? Go watch Duelist. He's so much better at speaking. So back is starting to walk forward. There are some... There were some strat bombers that decided to come in and level his economy for the second time. Which, in case you didn't know, is bad. And now Soul Bacchus has been defeated by Jip. Although we can, get, we can kind of give that one to Laura Mipsum. He would have died without that strat bomber. Strat Bomber. Yes, that Strat Bomber was very strotty. And this is a horrible position now, as Team 1 is going to be in a... Uh, like, this is just untenable. You you don't get to hold on to this now. That There's Titans pushing in. You don't have T3 land. Sure, Campfex gets this, but he lost all of the useful economy that was in this base right before his teammate died. Overall, it's looking pretty dire for Team 1. They need to get something happening over here on this northern side. Sailor Moon needs to start doing some work. As Jip has really just been a silent workhorse this game. He's really made the air work for himself. Getting some gunships out early to kill off some economy down here. Getting out the strat bombers as he did to make sure he could secure a kill. I would say that maybe he wants to support Edward a little bit more. Because Edward's in a really hard position here. Uh, he's out of units because Mongies have range and are being microed relatively well by Fong. And... Yeah, it's just looking real, real, real bad over here. The Strat Bomber coming in for some harassment damage. Do we have any ASF? We have a couple. We have at least one out over here and two in the middle. Gonna shoot down that Strat Bomber. And then we have, of course, these Spectres flying over some flak. And this is the epitome of one-man army as E33144211332424 has decided that he is just not going to build units for a little bit. He's just decided that why build unit when Calm do trick? And Calm has done trick. This Calm is like a dog doing a backflip while skateboarding. It's got some tricks up its sleeves. <laughs> As over here, we have Titans about to be reaching the f expansion base? No, this is just the main base of Campfex. 
It's starting to look like Lorem Ipsum's just gonna come in with the one, two, trickaroo, I kill your mess, and you go boo-hoo. I know I'm a poet. It, I, if, I, I, if you're crying, it's okay to pause the vi video. I know that was beautiful, just like all of you beautiful people. And the Titans are equally beautiful in this scenario, because they're gonna kill off all this T1 PD. They're gonna kill off all of these T2 mixes. And Camp Vex is going to be left with uh, no camp or Fex to give. He's going to be completely bankrupt, morally and fiscally. Because he's, A he's Aeon, like, of course. He's, he's morally bankrupt because that's just what the AR and R. But usually they're not fiscally bankrupt because they play air, and the air player usually does well economically. I don't know why I'm insulting the Aeon. That's totally off brand. Who? Who replaced Willow? First, you can't speak, and you're um and ah in every three seconds, and now you're insulting the Aeon? Uh, unsubscribe! Everybody! Leave! <laughs> this isn't the Willow I subscribed for. I've barely even insulted the Seraphims, other than the one where the one that died, and I guess he was the only one here, which, thank God. Um, don't have to look at those units quite as often. As over here, Titan on Titan action, it's it's horrible to be see seeing this UEF on UEF violence. Although it is really precedented, pretty sure the UEF have turned on each other in the storyline more than any other faction has turned on themselves. Admittedly speaking, the Aeon didn't really turn on themselves. The Aeon had a schism. But the, there was no, like, loyalist Aeon who turned on the loyalists and helped out the Seraphim. There was just Seraphim who had principles and stayed with the Aeon. And then there was just Seraph, or, or Aeon who were just like, Alright, well, the Seraphim are our gods, so we should worship them. It was just a religious dispute. That ended in the genocide of multiple groups of people. Every side had genocide going on. Uh, and these titans have been single-handedly producing a genocide all of their own. They're finally gonna die as they meander their way into Sailor Moon's base after leaving a trail of destruction bigger than your mother. And over here to the east, Camp Fex and Fong Fong dangerously close to dying. Looks like he walked one step too close to a fucking... Ravager or some shit. That, I guess strap bombers maybe did that or gunships, but man, Fong living dangerously. As up here to the northeast, that's a bunch of Ilshivas, that's a bunch of pillars with a couple of parashields, but I feel like the Ilshivas win here. Let's just check the mass numbers. Jip sitting on nearly 7,000 mass in Ilshivas right there, and Sailor Moon sitting on. Yeah, no, 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 no. Ilshivas win that, and they win it hard. But the problem is they don't win it when they have to get shot at by a bunch of Ravagers and Triads. And when there's about 20 Titans about to just show up and make their day real difficult. Yeah, these Titans, uh, they're gonna be a problem. Yep, that's, this is beautiful actually. Anybody else getting flashbacks to the, uh, Faf? or the, not the FAF, the FA uh, trailer. The Ilshivas on the bridge with the Titans and the UEF comm and the Seraphim comm. We just don't have the comms and we're not on a bridge and it's the desert. Also, it's weird that the FA campaign, like the FA trailer, has a bridge. And one of the defining characteristics of this game is that it does not support bridges. Bridges are foreign technology. They were too hard to produce in 2007. Hell, they were hard to produce in 2010. I don't think there's bridges in StarCraft, are there? I know there's multiple, like, elevation levels, but are there bridges? Can you go underneath them? Somebody answer in the comments. Y'all will know more about StarCraft 2 than me. All I know is how to, like, get to Platinum is... I'm not saying my fact. I've, uh, if you go... Oh, wait, no, that may not exist. There was a stream where I said my faction. Everybody go down below, get in the comments, give me some engagement. What faction in StarCraft 2 do I play?
I got to platinum on them, if that makes it easy, any easier. And platinum is like, it's not an achievement whatsoever in, um, in StarCraft 2. Like, getting platinum is, you played enough to get platinum. Almost. Like, it's so easy. You just have to have a build order. And not be, and you don't even have to execute the build order well, you just have to execute it, like, vaguely execute it and you can get to platinum it's pretty cool starcraft 2 is a fun game maybe i'll cast it one day as we have shield on the way for e33144211332423 um this youtube video is gonna get flagged it's gonna be like i'm they're gonna be like are oh, you you're sending coded messages to the chinese or something banned from youtube even though, isn't YouTube, isn't Alphabet owned by a Chinese company, or is Alphabet a U.S. company? Because Alphabet owns Google. I don't think Alphabet's owned by a... No, there's no way it's owned by a Chinese company. So, how's everybody today going? We have a really big lull here, so I guess it's time to look at the economies. Uh, Laura Mipsum sitting on the highest economy in the game, which is really surprising, considering Jip has two bases. Of 212, then Sailor Moon at 208, Jip at 198, everybody else below 100, so they're poor, so we don't pay attention to them. This is America. Uh, down to the west, southwest, we have a bunch of Percivals and Titans. Do we have a fat boy on the way? You're in fat boy territory. Or are you going to go Novax? Don't go Novax. You'll lose all of my respect, Laura Mipsum, if you build a Novax this game. As over here to the west, we have Harbinger on Titan. And if the Titans didn't have such overwhelming numbers, this might be interesting. But unfortunately for the Harbingers, they do not have the numbers to compete here. There's a Percival out over here from Fong that is trying to get a participation trophy, but really isn't doing very much. The Titans are redirecting their aggression. And uh, let's check in on reclaim numbers. 25,000 for Camp Fex, respectable. Jip at 22,000, respectable. Fong at 20,000, respectable. Everybody else doesn't reclaim, so they are, uh, we ignore them. This is America. Um, <laughs> I keep saying um, and it's really bothering me because I'm noticing it. Do I say um this much in normal casts or am I just, am I just like half brain dead this cast? Uh, these... These Seraphim Ilshivas, as opposed to the non-Seraphim Ilshivas, are having a real tough time, and that's a fat boy. That... He THICK, BOY! He THICK! And he about to cause some damage. In the center, Titans starting to get aggressive towards these units out from Fong, and towards the comm of Campfex. This could go south very, very quickly. Also, Jip still has, I think, complete air control. Jip, how many ASF do you have? No, don't want that. 49 ASF versus Fong, sitting at 18. Yeah, this is gonna go very poorly, and these Titans are just gonna continue their reign of terror, honestly. Although the Harbinger count has increased rapidly, and now there's enough Harbingers that these Titans really need to be worried. There's enough Harbingers to probably chase down these Titans. Although I don't know if the Harbinger is faster than the Titan, or if they're the same speed. But the Percivals are a bit of a problem. Gonna have to start mixing in some Sprite Strikers if Campex wants to continue with the T3 land route instead of going for maybe an experimental such as a Galactic Colossus. Don't know if he can really afford one. There's constant massive T3 battles going on over here. I'm confused by Sailor Moon. He's being very, very timid with this giant titan force. Jip has built an experimental. What did he build? A GC. All right then. The Harbingers in the middle are all dying to the combination of Percivals and Titans. The Harbingers are gonna trade out with most of the Titans. There's not gonna be very many Titans left, but the Percivals are now a problem that needs to be addressed. Campfex is gonna send his calm down to try and help with this. But that's more bravery than I would have shown. My solution to this is... Pray. Because, you know, you have to pray to the, to the Aeon gods or whatever. 
So wait, after the um after the war is it it, it are the seraphim still the gods of the aeon or did they just they just worship the princess cuz she was a martyr? Is is the princess like Jesus but for the aeon? <laughs> Questions that need to be answered. Somebody go down in the comments and give me your uh, headcanon on what the Aeon religion is, because I don't think it's all that well explained. Over here to the east, we have a fat boy firing all of his firepower towards a bunch of Elshivas. He's unfortunately targeting the backside of this force instead of going for center mass. But with all these titans in the area, yet again I ask, why are you not just walking in and murdering this base? Sure, that's a lot of T2PD, but that's not nearly enough T2PD. That's a bunch of gunships coming in. We have some strat bombers on retainer. They could come in and try and focus down the fat boy. There are some flare SAM sites, so if the flat the strap the flat bombers, if the flat bombers come in. They guaranteed just do not succeed in their goals. Shield creeping, Fatboy putting in a lot of work and producing a lot of pressure. A Fatboy now on the way for Lorem Ipsum. Lots of Percivals now congregating here in the middle. Strat Bombers coming into the middle trying to just get some carpet bombing down. And the Fatboy is pushing in. To the base. Well, I mean, it's not really pushing in, but it's sieging, and the Titans are pushing in. I mean, I really wish that the shield effects weren't so horrid. But here, we'll use... We'll use, like, this as the thumbnail. There we go. That'll be a good thumbnail. Look at those Titans. They're so beautiful as they run forward. I do have a respect for the UEF. They, they look very cool. The Aeon still look the best though as the shockers come in worst named unit in the game i am really ragging on the aeon although we all know they are the best faction so you know you gotta hate the best you gotta root for the underdogs which is every other faction right right every once in a while i have to balance the cards a little bit with my uh faction talk yeah, the Fat Boy and Titans out from Sailor Moon doing a beautiful, beautiful job over here of taking out this Seraphim base. And you know what? I am so much happier now that Team 1 is looking a lot stronger and doing quite a bit better. Unfortunately for them, though, Fong just walked into a GC. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I don't think Fong knew there was a GC there. But he definitely just walked in and was like, hi. And Jip was like, chest bump? See who goes explodey first? So, yeah, that GC. Uh, oh, there's no answer. Oh, there's no answer to the GC. Uh, Camp Fapex is now controlling three bases. As I, consider, I, can, as I continue to uh and ah. Uh, it's like a fucking scrub. Campfax is now got himself a fat boy. Seems as though that was gifted over from Sailor Moon. He's gonna be trying to use it to push back Edward, who has miraculously survived this entire time. 11,000 mass killed on the comma, 111 kills. It's a lot of ones. Just like his name, E33144211324. I, I butchered it that time, but we're just gonna go with it because it's not like you all are actually paying attention. If I didn't say anything, you all would have been like, Oh, he did it like 12 times! Didn't fuck up once! Except for the time where I said I fucked up even earlier than this one. So we have double Fatboy Sieges and a Fatboy out from Edward now that's returning fire towards the Fatboy of Sailor Moon. It's just really an obesity epidemic here in the later stages of this match. And oh no, E33144211332424 dies! Thankfully. <laughs> and with that, the turntables have turned once more, and now Jip 
is sitting on two bases. Campfax is sitting on quite a... Oh no, the GC. The GC is going to kill this entire air grid. Which means Jip gets complete air control for the entire game. Campfax is in a desperate situation. He is between... A rock in a hard place. I was trying to come up with a more clever analogy, but... Alas! It evades my puny, puny monkey brain. The fat boy over here that belonged to Edward has now died. Jip not quite able to pull that back in time. But another fat boy has taken its place, and it should have the capability to maybe trade with the original fat boy. I don't know. That veterancy is going to be a big deal right here. The fat boy for Sailor Moon is going to start falling back, and the fat boy for Jip is going to start going down into the deep six grave. I wasn't trying to make a Marilyn Manson reference, just like the beautiful people thing there. Deep six, six, deep six. Da, da, da. I don't know the words. I don't know the words to deep six. As another fat boy is showing up to challenge the king of the fat boys. That's the king of the fat boys right there. So this GC, which has killed off this entire base and is on five vet with 73,000 mass killed, is gonna die most likely because it's walking into a bunch of ra- Oh, it's not walking into a bunch of ravagers. Are these Rambo comms? Oh, these are Rambo comms. Those are Rambo comms, everybody. Uh, the king of the fat boys died. Uh, kind of, I guess, strap bombers. Yeah, strap bombers. Well, that's a bummer. And that's a lot of mass to reclaim right here on Jip's doorstep. Team one, I don't want to call it, but it just feels like it's a bit ogre. As this GC walks forward, and yet again proving, this one GC, one Aeon Experimental, has achieved more than three fat boys for either side. Three fat boys, on, there have been three fat boys in this game, technically a fourth now, um, and none of them have managed to kill off two bases. One has killed off one base. This GC has killed off two bases by itself, and it's about to kill off a RAS SCU, or a Rambo SCU, and it may be able to get another one. That's 15,000 HP, even though it's on a sliver of HP right now. It still has 10k HP to chew through. I don't think it survives here, but... The Rambo may die. Oh! The Rambo's explosion kills the GZ. That's kind of convenient uh, for Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon is building Rambo comms, and he's building them quick. That might be a good strategy. I mean, he's going to have a lot of Rambo comms, and he's going to have them very soon. Uh, over here we have the Phantom Boy, along with the Percival, and it's killing off the remainder of Camp Fax base. So, Campfex is now a homeless man with a gun and shield upgrade, and 5 vet, and 28,000 mass kill. He is truly not the hero that we wanted, but the hero that we needed. The Aeon players in this game outperforming everybody else by far. Campfex have, has had a pretty decent game. He's He started off by really beating back Edward, unfortunately was not able to keep that momentum going and didn't eco hard enough. But it's been a definite positive force for Team 1. And Campfex is now going to be eating Fatboy Fire. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't feel particularly good, I'm sure. And uh, that's a bunch of gunships coming in, and Campfex is dead. Jip gets another kill. Has Jip killed every... ACU, he killed Solbacchus. He killed Campfex. He killed Fong. If somehow Jip also kills Sailor Moon, he has gotten a quadra kill. 
Sailor Moon is starting to produce a decent amount of Rambo boys. Are the Rambo boys going to be enough? Will the Rambo boys achieve victory for Sailor Moon, or will the more likely thing happen of the two fat boys and overwhelming air superiority of Jip and Lorem Ipsum be enough? All that and more on the 5 o'clock news tonight. So, fat boy, two ranks of veterancy, 32,000 mass killed, respectable. 3,000 mass killed, 25 uh, kills total, no veterancy, but it's a very young fat boy. He hasn't quite grown into the heart disease yet. The GC, the second GC for Jip is encountering a problem, and that problem rhymes with Hambo Doms, and it is, of course, really painful to be shot in the back by all of these high fire rate T3 Rambo SCUs that the UEF have access to. And in the center, these fat boys, this one at least still kind of sieging up, but this one a little bit, how do you say, lazy, as you might expect from a two vet fat boy. He's been around the block a couple of times. He doesn't, he can't move as, he's not as spry as he once was. He can't, he doesn't have the range of motion. So movement is just really hard for fat boys. We need to have like some fat boy awareness. We need to have healthy at any weight. <laughs> uh, just for the official thing, I don't believe in the healthy at any weight thing. You, you can be unhealthy. I don't care if you're happy being unhealthy. I'm just saying, don't try and say you're healthy and whenever you're not, like don't lie. Lying kind of sucks. Sailor Moon control K's, he takes away the quadra kill, he takes it off the plate for Jip. And those Rambo boys, they did well. Thank you all for watching, you all are beautiful. If you want access to every single video, just a little bit early, between 12 and 24 hours is how early you do get it, uh, please consider joining the channel membership at the mini dualities tier or higher. Like or subscribe if you are here, you've watched these videos, you've watched all the way to the end. Please consider hitting those buttons, they do help out the channel. And, of course, thank you to the Patreons who are oh so generous and help this channel stay alive, just like the channel members.